guys, Larry Chen here. We are at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. This is Super Lap Battle, and this is Paul and his crazy, crazy doesn't really explain it, DSM. This thing is wild. And actually, I wanted to feature this last year, but you guys were running into quite a bit of issues. I did not want to bother you guys, but <laughs> now it seems like it's a lot more sorted. There are still some issues because you are really on the ragged edge yeah. of making this thing as fast as possible. Yep. So yeah. what, what did this start life as? What's the story behind this? So it started as a 95 Eagle Talon. Uh, when I got it, it was still a stock seven bolt. Uh, wasn't much done to it. I've been building it up over the last four years. I picked up an AMB V2 aero kit that's on the car now. Um, fully built engine now, uh, Shep stage three trans. Trying to get all the reliability issues sorted. It's making just under 700 horse. Just 700. So, and all, all will drive. <laughs> all will drive. I haven't seen another one of these at a time attack event. It's been a long time. So Andrew Brilliant had one back in the day uh, and he ran his, uh, his was front wheel drive. Uh, he ran it for a couple of years. And then actually Philip Acierto with C1 Motorsports, he, he has Andrew's old car now. But I think I'm the only one doing time attack actively with this kit. There's just so much to, to dive into, but like tell, tell us a little bit about the body. This is um, obviously a lot wider than stock. Yeah, so the over fenders, those are all part of the AMB V2 kit. Uh, Carbonetics, carbon fiber, they're the ones that fabricate the kit. And Andrew Brilliant designed it. He's a big aerodynamicist for like Sydney world class time attack cars. That's about four inches wider than the factory bodywork. I'm actually running his old wheels. We're on a 295 square. What about this? Is yep. this part yep. of the kit too? Yep, rear over fenders were part of the kit. The hood is actually part of the kit as well. And there's more to the kit that I don't have installed right now, but uh, it's kind of a pain to get on and we, we're trying to sort out an easier solution for mounting it. The arrow is just so wild. I'm, I'm guessing this is all functional. Correct, yep. But this is so wild, the way that this is mounted. Uh, is this so the, the rear wing into the chassis? Or? Yeah, so the, the crash bar has been removed and then we uh, bolted in another crash bar out of metal that's got the tabs welded onto it and then we mounted the uh, street faction uprights to that. And that's an APR GT1000 wing. Wow. How much downforce do you think this creates? A lot. <laughs> I, I don't have an exact number, but it's it's quite a bit. Yeah, because um, you're a privateer. This is something that you do for fun. Yep. You know, it's not like you have a big title sponsor that's sponsoring right. <laughs> this build. You're doing this, and honestly, you're doing it with such a hard vehicle to start with. Right? Yeah, I guess I like challenging things. I mean, it's like you said, you don't see Eagle Talons out here in Time Attack anymore, and it's just a chassis I've always loved. I've been, I've had seven or eight of them now. And I always wanted to push it to its limits and see how far we can go with it. So this is kind of the culmination of that. Yeah, because this this is, it is a Mitsubishi Eclipse. Yes. Um, but uh, there, it's just a couple little things appearance-wise that sets it apart from the Eclipse, right? Yeah, yeah. They just had different body panels to them. And all, most of those body panels are now gone and replaced with the Cerro kit. Uh, we've even cut the roof out and put a carbon roof on it. Uh, try to get weight as low as we can get. So this is carbon, this is carbon. Yep. All of this is carbon. Yep, the hood is carbon. And we're on carbon headlight deletes. Again, almost all of it's made by Carbonetics. How um, much lighter is this versus stock? Uh, we weighed it at 2577 just before the event, full full weight. Um, stock was about 3180. So we've cut a good bit of weight out of it. Plus we had a cage in it now, and I mean, we added some weight along with it, so. For an all-wheel drive car, that's very lightweight. Yeah, um, we're getting there. I'm sure it goes pretty crazy when, when it's, uh, when boost kicks in. Yeah, yeah, the little 62 turbo right now, 62 millimeter turbo, it's, it, it kicks pretty hard when it comes in. Uh, thankfully, I try to keep the RPMs above that transition because it's it's kind of violent. It'll spin all four tires at like 60 miles an hour. Is this a skin it's a, or? It's a fiberglass door. Okay. Yep. Oh. Another carbonetic, carbonetics piece. And the dash is all fiberglass as well. So that was from them as well. Hmm. They're sponsoring the car this year. Look, can we talk about the motor? Yeah. So what is this? I don't know much about Eclipses. Is this the stock block? It is. Yep. It's still stock block. It's a 4G63, one of the early ones. It's, a, it's actually a seven bolt. A lot of people don't run the seven bolt because they had issues with the crank walk. I haven't had any any problems so far, but we're also running a lighter pressure twin disc clutch, so it doesn't put as much thrust load on it. And did you have to go up in any literage or anything? Is nope, still... it's still, still a 2.0 liter. It is fully built, pistons, rods, crank. 
uh, cams to hold nine yards. We're running 11,000 RPM springs in it. We're only spinning about nine grand on average. Um, mm. Because, that's well, we're running stock oil pumps. That's yeah. really our hindrance right now. If we can get on a dry sump, we can, we can really let it sing. But it's working good. I mean, I'm happy with it. We're, that RPM lets me stay in boost all the time. So right now you're running into some issues just from your last session. Uh, yeah. What happened last time? Uh, we actually broke the wastegate off last time off the exhaust manifold. So we're getting ready to tear it down and, and weld it back on and try to get a couple more laps in. Um, Fun time attack things, huh? Yeah, it, it's always something. It's a 26 year old car. It's not gonna be perfect, but we're, we're slowly getting worked through all the learning curve of pushing these things this hard for a three and a half mile track. But 700 horsepower, uh, I feel like I've seen Eclipse drag cars. Oh yeah. But they, it's just not, you know, you mentioned the other ones that do time attack. It, it is a different story to make this motor work this hard for this long, right? You know, for I mean, you have to put it together for one lap, but yeah, you we'll, you need multiple attempts, correct? Right at this correct. one lap. To yeah, really, we can't rebuild it after each each event. I mean, it's we're out here tomorrow too, running it the same that we ran it today. So, and drag guys, I mean, they, it's not uncommon to some of the big guys are running 13, 1400 horsepower out of these motors and. This is really cool. It honestly looks like a drag car from up here, you know, without the splitter on it. Yeah. But once you put the splitter on, it just looks so mean. Um, what are you doing for cooling then? So cooling, we're running a custom radiator uh, and we actually tube chassis the front this year from last year just to help move everything away from the exhaust manifold because from the factory, you can't really fit your hand between where the radiator should sit and where the exa exhaust manifold was. So we did all this, moved everything forward. The intercooler is as far forward as we could fit it. And so far, coolant temps have been rock solid. We haven't had any issues there. And that's the oil cooler right there? Yep, yep, okay. this is the oil cooler. Um, just a pretty standard unit. I don't even remember what manufacturer it was, but something I ordered off Summit. Seems How good. is it that the transmission can handle this horsepower? Because it's all-wheel drive. Got to drive it kind of gingerly. I mean, it's a. have owned the transmission for about four years and haven't touched anything in it. So uh, I would say that's probably the, the weakest part of the engine drivetrain setup, but there's not a lot of options anymore. Not many people are supporting this chassis for upgrades so so and it's a five speed yep five speed so what have you done anything to like the center diff or anything like that to change it that, at all so, this is all stock so i'm running a frontline fabrication brace on the transfer case and rear diff but all the internals are completely stock even the rear diff even the rear diff yep and we we actually went to an aluminum drive shaft this year to lighten up that a little bit um but yeah other than that i mean it's stock axles even We're that so and it's over three times almost four times normal power yep stock power yep that is incredible. I'm surprised you do not pop <laughs> axles a lot more than find you some do. wood. <laughs> but uh, yeah. there's some wood right yeah. here. Yeah. No, I mean, even... <laughs> one really interesting thing. There's a couple more things I want to talk about, but one really interesting thing is your braking setup here. What, tell me about this. Yeah. So we're running Cadillac CTSV front rotors. It's a really easy swap to do on these cars. I think you can do it for just under 600 bucks. Uh, so you get a four piston Brembo. They actually use a Mustang uh, Cobra, SVT Cobra rotor from like an 0102 uh, to fit. And then I we're- can't, I can't believe it. like all of this, it's a mishmash of all these parts that, yeah. that kind of come together to work. Yep. Yeah, like, I mean, there's not much support for these, like we said, so you gotta, you gotta find stuff to, and make it work. Uh, and then we're running G-Lock pads this year, which have been awesome. We were running Hawks last year and we kept cracking rotors every time we went out. So the G-Locks have been working good for us. It looks great. It looks like it's supposed to be there. The, this uh, CTSV caliper. What about the rears? Rears are stock. Okay. Stock with G-lock pads. Huh. It's so small compared to yes. the wheel. <laughs> it's kind of incredible. And you also have a, a pin what, what are these called? Yeah, we put pin yeah. stands in it. It's like a very like rally car kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. When, when we have the rest of the aero kit on, it actually sits down another four inches under this bodywork, uh, and it's fiberglass almost to the center of the car, so we can't get a jack underneath it to jack it with everything on it. So we put the pin stands in and we have bars that extend out that we can put a jack underneath and then it, then it holds it all in the air that way. It's just a lot safer than using jack stands yes. or anything. Safer and easier. Yeah. Saves us a lot of time. You got an accu sump yep. here. Yeah, we're running a three quart accu sump because it's still the, the stock oil system, stock oil pan, and we're pulling some pretty good G's in this thing, so. Haltec ECU. Yep, that's new for this year as well, the Haltec ECU and the IC7 dash. Uh, so we can actually start logging and monitoring things a little better than the AEM V1 I was on last year. It's incredible so. to me to see all of this, this, this stock stuff. Yep. You know, when, when I look at it from the outside, you think, I, I would think that everything is just so custom, but um, I guess, you know, they did it right from the factory, over-engineered a lot of this stuff from the factory. Yeah, and I, 
I'm working on a budget, so you know, as I can, I try to upgrade stuff, and the stuff that hasn't broke or I, I don't think is a huge improvement, I make work. <laughs> yeah, and the cage is really nice too. Yeah, uh, it was actually a pre-built cage from Summit. It was uh, one of the brands that they carry. We modified it to fit a little bit closer when we had the roof off for the carbon skinning. We we put the cage in it, and a buddy from mine from back home, he welded it all in for me. So came came out pretty good. We're happy with it. Where are you guys from? Uh, I'm living in South Carolina right now. Okay. Yep, originally from Michigan, but we reside in South Carolina for now. Hmm. Well, it's so good to see you out here again. Last year, I know you guys were just struggling, banging your heads, yeah, trying lot. to get this thing to work, uh, try to get it around the track. Yeah, but we broke this year, our cam gears first session last year, and that was the start of a lot of other problems. So That's so rough. I, I mean, but just now you had a couple of sessions and you already put down a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we ran a 227, about 710, still kind of scrubbing the car in. Uh, we, we blew a boost hose off when we went out for a warm-up lap, so I went on our cold tires after we got that fixed and tried to get a time on the board. So, What do you think this can do, honestly? I'm hoping a 214. Yeah, our predictive is right around a 214, so I'd like to be able to drive it to there. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a benefit. Well, Plus. hopefully she holds together. This is just such a wild build, and I just love seeing these. And it also has an awesome story behind it. Yeah, thank you so much for yeah. bringing it out. My, my pleasure, man. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah.